back. We are really back. We're live, and this is our new salute. Yeah, our new salute. Everybody, salute, salute. Okay, all right, and that means take that away. Yeah, yeah. We want to reach that seventy-three million people that the national de that the debate reached on Tuesday. Uh, welcome, Tim Apicella, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Sinclair, and Winston Welch. Even though his name is not on the bottom, we'll put it there soon. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Coronaville. Uh, what's next? What's happening now? And um, you know, we had we had this uh, debate where not a lot came out. But Tim, what did come out? What did we learn about Coronaville and coronavirus from the debate on Tuesday? Well, I think Joe Biden attempted to frame the response to coronavirus uh, as a dismal failure from this administration, and specifically from Donald Trump, particularly if it pertained to mask wearing or uh, testing or contract tracing. Um, I'm not saying Donald Trump, and I don't think Joe Biden said Donald Trump was responsible for 205,000 deaths, but he certainly is responsible for a significant portion of that number due to a lack of response or lack of preparation and a lack of uh, taking the pandemic seriously. In fact, we know otherwise that in his comments to um, Bob Woodward, he did just the opposite. He knew how deadly the virus was and he failed purposely not to expose it because he didn't want to damage the, his precious Dow Jones Industrial Average, the, the uh, NASDAQ or the Standards & Poor uh, stock market because that is tied to his ability to be reelected and his perception that the, the stock market is the economy. Yeah, so, uh, so you know, if, if you were one of the 73 million people who watched that, did you, did you get the message? Did you even get the contention? Did you even get their respective positions on it? Uh, what came, you know, what, what did the American public learn from that debate about coronavirus? Well, they couldn't get, they couldn't hear Joe Biden. They couldn't hear his message because Donald Trump, purpose, on, with purpose, tried to drown out his voice. And that was his strategy from the, the, the very beginning of the debate is to drown his voice out because what Joe Biden is going to say is things that are true and that truth will damage Donald Trump and his ability to be reelected. So I think the public heard very little. They can't even remember what Joe Biden said because of jo uh, Donald Trump's um, interference and interruptions. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So, but in fact, Stephanie, what is happening with coronavirus? You know, there are some people, including people who appear on Think Tech, that ardently believe that we are turning the corner, that we are licking it, and that our economy is, is, is resurrecting itself. There are people who firmly believe that all over the country. I, I mean, it's, it's the base, it's the Trumpers, but uh, they carry that around and they talk about that and they be, believe it to the core of their being. But what is really happening, Stephanie? Well, we are having um, in every state that we're in many states that a hundred daily, we're still having upwards of a hundred in Hawaii. Um, well, there it is. Is that uh, data? But um, so the data is still not good. And the projection is for another swipe at us um, this fall. So we're going to get a surge. And um, some I people think, think we are having a surge right now in New York. Uh, we're having a surge. There are lots of new cases in New York. And New York yeah. has been pretty careful about it. Um, yeah. But you know, the failure of social distancing, the failure of masks takes a terrible toll sooner or later. Let me ask you, what, what, what is happening with Trump? He's having rallies, you know. He's addressing tons of people, you know, this weekend. He's got it all planned. And uh, there won't be a, a, a debate kind of interruption. It'll be him alone on the, on the podium talking to his supporters. Well, I look out at those people, I look at these rallies and look at the people and think, who are you? Why are you taking this risk? And if you look at the data, I did look a little bit at it. It's really hitting the 30 year olds, you know, that that group in there. It's not it's not just the oldsters going down. It's it's in the 30s, the, the vibrant, healthy, you know, Jack Armstrongs that are out there. And I, I we don't had, we had one guy here in Hawaii. I think he was 29. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these people are not necessarily dying. So I've shifted over to there's a new drug that is uh, that they've got that the stock stock's going up because there's a new drug that they are giving at the outset of uh, once they're diagnosed that gets in the way of some of this uh, deadly overcoming um, your system, your immune system. So there's some help there in the the treatment. Who's they? <coughs> the Rensselaer, what is it? Ren, 
they is the Remdesivir. Drug. Remdesivir. Yeah. yeah, that's not. They were talking about it on um, CNBC. Or whatever. That's not new. That's repurposed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, there's a one that other one that they have been giving, but this one that has been very, very good. So anyway, I'm just looking at it, thinking people are doing that. They've just shifted over. To to thinking that medicine is going to save them without ever knowing how horrible it was in the isolation, the ISU. They never showed the nation how badly that death takes you and where you go in that. I mean, you yeah, are. Yeah. It's, it's tragic because you die without your family. You die miserably. Um, so Cynthia, you like to take cruise ships. I know you do. Uh, you take cruise ships all the time. So can you talk to us about what is happening in cruise ships and the CDC? Well, you know, since I'm so rich and I get to go on all these cruises every year. Um, <laughs> no, actually, you know, they're just floating is, is what they are. It's basically a floating Petri dish. And they've been parked for a really long time. And now Trump has overrode the CDC and said they have to open again. But, you know, the biggest thing that I see in what Trump is doing is having these Wisconsin rallies. Okay, in Green Bay and Gellum, they are at 94% capacity in their hospitals. And he wants to have a giant rally in Green Bay. He will on Saturday. Um, another one in La Crosse. Um, the COVID cases are up by 30% from the day before. Um, there's a record number of hospitalizations for two weeks straight. Um, his own task force, has said that they need a, a red um, a maximum, uh, uh -oh. um, I was losing you for a minute. Sorry, but the, even his own task force has said Wisconsin has to go on maximum protocol. And yet here he comes, Gellin, I know Green Bay and La Crosse are where he's gonna be this weekend. He's not gonna stop, even though they've asked him to, even though the task force has, you know, made it saying that they have to be in the red zone. Well, this, is, this goes back to a point that Tim was making that, you know, he controls the agenda on the news. He is the news cycle. And if he's not the news cycle on any given day, he can create the news cycle and, and uh, you know, uh, flush out all the real news. So the result is that what happens in Green Bay, uh, which, you know, two weeks later, there'll be, a, you know, a, a surge there because of it. Uh, we won't hear about that because we'll hear about something else outrageous that he does. And so the public never really gets the story. He's really been brilliant at that, uh, about blocking the news and especially the news about uh, COVID. So, you know, uh, there's been talk and Trump has talked about the vaccine. Um, and uh, he said the vaccine would be ready by, I think he said the vaccine would be ready by election day, which is coming soon. It's just uh, nigh a month. And so what do you think, Winston? Is that, is that happening? Um, what should we think about the vaccine right now? I think you could go to China and Russia and probably get a test one right now, but um, I don't see any people getting on the plane to do that. It, it, regardless of what is said, the reality of whether it's, there is actually a vaccine is when Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson and all their uh, friends are gonna come out and say, here's the vaccine, here's where you get it, Here's how much it costs. Here's the side effects. Here's what you can expect. That's when the vaccine will come out. Right now, uh, we have been told repeatedly, as soon as there's a pronouncement made from the White House that there is a vaccine that's going to be ready next week, next month, tomorrow, today, yesterday, it's followed up immediately by, I, it's actually not coming. And so right now, so don't expect it uh, by the end of the year, um, just to not get your hopes up. And, you know, you're talking about having to produce but 350, 400 million vaccines just for America alone. But when you got half the people that say they're not gonna take it right now, because they, especially if it came out um, before the end of the uh, the, uh, the year or the election. So, so it, what's the point? We don't know about it. I don't think we need to be focusing as much on a vaccine as still preventative measures, which is, uh, you know, wearing a mask, washing your hands, and realizing that that actually is common sense that goes back for a century. It's something that we have some control over that seems to work. I'm more concerned about our state opening up, frankly, uh, on the 15th for tourism. And this is, this is silly. Our cases yesterday, uh, 
in September 30th, 121 new cases um, and two deaths. We have 140 people hospitalized in the state with 47 in intensive care. Intensive care beds are at the state are at 70% capacity. Uh, and it says the quarantine facilities are at 32% capacity. I guess that's referring to the, ho the hotel rooms where people are being quarantined out if they can't do it at home. We're at 70% capacity. And what it seems to me, what we've done, I, the state has actually stepped up its game. I noticed they're giving out free PPP, uh, PPE, uh, protective equipment to uh, nonprofits, to clinics and uh, dental places if they needed it. Uh, but it seems to me that we're going the route of Florida, maybe Florida light here, where we're just going to go by, can our hospitals handle, or can we be under 90% or whatever number they've determined in our intensive care with COVID? And that's kind of what they're, 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 uh, it seems to be the route that we're going. And if we needed to shut down on some other way, but as long as you're under there, I think it's just kind of like, a, you know, folks, it's here. It's going to work its way community, do the best you can. But as long as we're able to keep people in the hospital under a certain rate, I think they're just kind of on some level giving up. That's what it well, feels like. Have we given up, Tim? I mean, it, it seems to me that the, there's no single message from the state. The uh, Department of Health is, uh, is a train wreck. Um, the tracing, testing thing is not working. Uh, we're not getting information. Uh, we're not having transparency. Oh, what's going on? How, how well do you think the state and the city for that matter are doing uh, in protecting us? I think they are making progress. I, I don't believe they've done everything. I, again, we took um, Sarah Park and Bruce Anderson to task rather harshly because they're on the tail end of, of what happens when this pandemic, this virus takes effect of a, a, a city or a state. Um, what we have failed to do is recognize where were the failures on the front end of the equation? Where was the crackdown on open beach parties under awnings, you know, where you'd see 10, 20, 25 people all within nose range of each other? Where was the citations to stop that and, and the, the police to stop that? Where were the citations that went into uh, Kaka'ako when these bars are packed with people, with no ventilation, no masks? And, and where was the, where was the, you know, the, the enforcement of, of the mayor's rule about that. So I think we're trying to play catch up. I think the city and the state's trying to play catch up. Obviously when you're playing catch up, um, you're going to take longer to finally get the results that you're looking for. That's why we're still seeing triple digits in our, our caseloads. Well, you know, one uh, thing that Winston mentioned that I think is worth asking you about it um, is, is that uh, tourism is supposed to come back. Right now we're doing like only 300 a day. They want to open the, the, the floodgates. They want, they want a lot of tourists in now because they got this, uh, the idea that we've, we can't do any more on COVID, so let's do tourism. Let's reopen. I, I, have, I have such a structural, logical problem with that. Um, but, you know, in a week or two, we will be opening it again. And the rules will be different and more liberal for tourists to come here. Uh, what do you what do you see in that? I mean, the the why is easy, but what is going to happen? The how the how is hard. Um, yeah. You know, when when you're going to be a tourist that's coming aboard, you're going to get a test within 72 hours of boarding that plane. Um, if you've ever flown a plane, when you when you come into Hawaii in the old days, remember you were given a checklist of of you know where you're coming from and are you carrying fruits and vegetables, and you kind of had a little checklist, and on the back side you had a little marketing questionnaire. Um, let's convert that form or continue that form, but had a, an addendum talking about the rules of the road as it pertains to COVID and your rights and responsibilities of protecting the citizenship here of Honolulu and, and the state as a whole. So let's have a signed disclosure form that you are going to abide by before you debark off your Hawaiian Airlines or United Airlines or Alaska Airlines plane. You know, Stephanie, PBN is having a, a, a webinar in the next uh, week or two, uh, is that early October, I guess, next week, um, on the, the legal implications of failing to protect people uh, from COVID, like class action suits and the like. Um, and you know, I guess a lot of lawyers are getting ready for a lot of litigation about this. Uh, and it means that, for example, if a hotel opens and it doesn't take all the steps in the protocol to protect its guests and the public and staff and whatnot, 
uh, there'll be a lawsuit. What's your reaction to that? Should, should there be litigation on this sort of thing? Um, and what rules exactly does the hotel or the business follow? Well, it just seems like it's just going to layer litigation on litigation because I'm sure that when you make your reservation, they're going to have some form you fill out. What do you call those pre 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 agreement that, that you won't sue? I mean, everybody's putting out that kind of thing now, so you have to, including be, Trump. And, yeah, Rondo, you know, saying send in a. a um, a statement of I will not sue this condo if I get COVID. You know, I mean, right down to our own living situation. So I think that that's just going to breed whatever that matrix mess gets to be if you have that layering of litigation from here to there. But let's face it, Hawaii's in pretty desperate straits, as I understand it, and I'm reading about it. We've got the military here, so there's an ongoing chunk chunk of money that's coming in from the military to the state which can maybe keep us all poised for a year but then the the other resources are really only the construction contracts so as much as i hate looking out and seeing all these cranes and everything that is the only viable income the state has now which is the money coming in from howard hughes and all these people that are down here you know, cranking away um, and Jack Hammering in more of these hotels. So um, I think that the difficulty is huge for the state right now. The good news is that the movie industry and television, they're coming in and doing a lot more here in terms of having the setting and the scenery. That's brought up more discussion of the dis dis diversification of the economy. And hey, isn't that a good idea? I mean, we've done that before. We need a lot more of it. But yeah. now with graphics and the simulations on TV, CGI or whatever it's called, they're soon not going to need to come to Hawaii to have a palm tree. You know, they're going to be able to make that. So sure, they can create now backgrounds elsewhere. You know, Cynthia, you know, th th there's, there's talk about how the economy is recovering. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's hard to find evidence of that. Um, you don't see the restaurants opening. A lot of restaurants are dying. I can tell you, we have a we have a show here on Think Tech. You remember Think Tech, right? Uh, we have a show here on Think Tech um, called you know restaurants uh, in Hawaii, and uh, they they all come on and say, well, I shouldn't say all, but a number of them come on. A high percentage say we're 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 not going to last that much longer. We're going to have to go out of business. Um, and, and our economy is, is, is really failing. And, and what, the other thing I hear, and it's, it's anecdotal for me, uh, is that people are leaving. Um, you know, the smart guys who used to have jobs and don't have jobs anymore and don't see the prospect of jobs, they're getting on a plane such as it is, and they're going to the mainland. You know, what, what is this, you know, what, A, what is happening to our state? Because you don't really hear it in a, in a, in a macro way. And B, what should I do? What should I do? Well, for one, you can talk to Governor Ige because <laughs> this come out, okay, as far as the CARE Act, you know, the CARES Act funds that we got here in Hawaii, we got $1.25 billion for the CARES Act. That was our state's thing. So they, they broke it down on the news this morning. It was $163 million for contact tracing, $100 million for rent and mortgage, 132 million for small businesses, 268 million for housing and health. And the hotels supposedly are getting 134 million a piece. Now I know that there's a, um, a deadline. You have to use this money by a certain day or you have to return it to the federal government. So what Ige was saying is that he's gonna put it in a trust before he lets that happen. Well, I remember back in the beginning when the, when this state when we first got our CARES Act money, none of it went to the individual, none of it. When he could have been the one to up the amount of the just for our state anyway, you know, the people that are suffering from all of the cutbacks to the um, unemployment, he could have done it. He could have said, okay, well, how about if I'm the one who puts that money up? give you that extra $300 a month or, or a week or whatever, and put that into the budget instead of trying to stuff it away in a trust fund. I'm sorry, yes, this may go on for a long time. And I imagine that's what his thinking behind this trust fund or saving it for a rainy day, which is what he said in the beginning, 
But, you know, we've got all kinds of problems with these contract tracers that we supposedly had. There was a big deal about it recently where there really weren't as many as they were saying there were. So where's all this 163 million going if it's going to contact tracers and we don't really have hardly any. So I'm starting to really question the, you know, the validity of exactly where all this money is, where it is going. And I'd like to see a whole lot more transparency about that. So yeah. what you can do what I can do, what each of us can do is to contact EGA and say, hey, be more transparent. We want to know what's really going on with this money. I think that's a really good point. Uh, so Winston, you know, a lot of this is government has a duty of transparency, both state and especially federal. Um, and government has a duty to, you know, care about us and, uh, and, and, and take, a, take care of us in a time of crisis. Um, how do you feel about the fact that Congress cannot seem to come together and that the Senate will not follow, you know, this one-sided negotiation uh, with uh, Nancy Pelosi? Now she's at 2.2 trillion and the, the, the Republicans still don't want to do it. And they are saying, no, no, no. In the, in the meantime, people all over Hawaii and elsewhere are not getting a second tranche of money. Uh, where does that fit? And how do you think it affects the electorate? Well, I, I mean, our national politics are just a sad indictment of, of how weak our system could be when it, when it could be abused in ways that we never imagined that it could be. Um, we have a lot of cleanup and repair to do that, uh, to do there. Um, but right now, I don't think we need to be looking to the federal government. I, obviously, the federal government needs to step in in a massive way to bail out the states and, and cities. And that, that will happen. It has to happen. There's no, there's no choice in that. But for right now, we need to, I, I think it, it's, it's local. It's this local focus. What can you do? What is our state doing? You talk about transparency in our state. Weren't we the first state to come out with a uh, blanket government secrecy laws, exempting ourselves of the uh, uh, Information Freedom uh, uh, Open Meetings Act and that sort of thing, when at a time when we absolutely sunshine, needed- Sunshine. Sunshine yeah. law, thank you. When we absolutely needed this more than ever, and then look what happened. Look at the fiasco in the health department. I mean, it seems like, however, and now after all of the six months later and a lot of suffering and misery, there's been a change. There's, there's, I can feel something is different. There seems to be a coherent, more coherent response. The state just got sued, a class action lawsuit, or someone was threatening it about the people that haven't gotten unemployment insurance for months and months and months and saying, enough already. Uh, so we've got enough problems right here at home. We don't even have to look uh, 2,500 miles across the ocean or 5,000 to Washington. Uh, we have enough right here, right now of what we can focus on and also our point of control locally about, uh, you know, getting tested or uh, quarantining. These are all very local things that are happening. Of course, they're supported by the federal government. But as I've been saying all along, what can you do right now? How can you help your neighbors? How can you check on people? What can you do personally as best as you know how, given the information and circumstances to do what you can do? Now, the state opening up to tourism right now and flooding that in. I understand there's a trade-off like people don't have jobs. They want to get back to work, but at what cost is that going to happen? This is not easy. This is advanced um, no, civilization. No. I, I know I know you'd like to focus on the state and because the state is where the, in effect, the buck stops, but I'm, um, I, I'd like to go back to the Fed for a minute with Tim. Tim, you know, we don't have a clear message from the federal government, from Trump. I mean, since everything he's doing is either to lie about it, uh, I mean, that in the worst possible dark lie sense, or to confuse us about it, which really has the same effect, or to get into these ridiculous squabbles with members of his own administration. Uh, Cynthia mentioned the, the CDC issue, which uh, came out yesterday, uh, and, the, and the cruise ships. But there's lots of other arguments going on between Trump and the scientists. Can you talk about that? And you talk about the effect of that on, on people in general around the country, including here, uh, and on the electorate coming soon. Okay, thank you, Jay. Um, I think you mentioned the message. The message is clear. By not doing anything, he's doing something. And what he's doing, that something is, I, I believe, he's, he now co is convinced, and I think has been convinced for quite some time, that herd immunity is the way that the nation should go. And I believe through um, not admitting it, but 
by indirectly just saying everything's open for business. Uh, the masks are silly, but you know, if you have to wear one, you have to wear one. Not being a cheerleader for prevention of COVID, but being permissive of letting COVID take its course and just ensuring that all businesses, all, all so, you know, society's functions are wide open and COVID will take its death toll as he feels what it'll, it'll need to take in order to open things up and, and preserve the economy. Uh, he doesn't see a balance here. He doesn't see how you could open up the economy, but do so with caution and care and, and, and pr protective measures in place. It's either yes or no, black or white, either or for Donald Trump. And I think that's the message he has sent down to all his administrative staff. I think that's the message he sent to the public, all his uh, task force um, meetings that he's had on TV and using the bully pulpit to his advantage. And look at where we're at, 207,000 deaths. Uh, that number is going to go up to 300,000 easily between now and, and maybe uh, the end of the year, even higher. Uh, oh, so sure. he has spoken loud and clear. He has spoken loud and clear on this. Uh, right. Uh, it's, it's, he's a monster. It's monstrous what's happening. It's ghoulish. Uh, ghoulish, thank you. So, Stephanie, one thing we haven't mentioned today is the schools. What about the schools? We have the same kind of contention on the schools. Can you give us a little report on how the schools are doing? Are they reopening or not? And if, they're, if they are reopening in certain places, and oh, the whole thing is fragmented anyway, um, is that successful or not? Well, of course you have more than a half, 50% uh, of the, the secondary kids are not doing by virtual, not to mention then all the people who don't have the equipment. And then the, the bottom line on this, we know there's a successful model. I've mentioned before the Denmark model, they've had no cases and they've had these kids in school since March. But the key here is the usual key, is the, what do we used to call that thing? The skeleton key, right? That opens all the doors and it's called funding, money for teachers, for space. Like some of the private schools here, the expensive ones are taking the kids back, but they've got them in little bitty groups, little bitty groups. They stay in these little bitty groups all day. They never see anybody else. It just becomes their little family cohort and they're, they're masked and shielded. Okay, so that takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of space. Space is expensive as are people. Those are your two big issues in a bu any budget. So um, any business budget is going to be paying for those. So, so right there, it's stymied because there's not enough money to do it. So nobody's even thinking about doing it because how are they going to be able to finance that? But people are trying to get better on the virtual, but it's a very steep climb up. And uh, I, I, I think it's uh, people are doing what they can do and it's getting a little desperate because people do need to be at work and then they don't have the work to. So yeah, it's very much all over the place, Jay. That's yeah. one, one revelation, one revelation, Cynthia, is as uh, Cynthia brings up, it's the money. It's the money for unemployment insurance. Uh, it's the money to make things safe. It's uh, in, including in the schools. Um, it's the money for PPE and uh, it's money. It's all about money. And so far we spent, what is it, $3 trillion on the federal. Uh, I think we've emptied the coffer here in the state. The state is underwater, even though the constitution says, you know, you're supposed to have a balanced budget. Forget that. Uh, and it'll be worse next year. So what do you think about the money? What do you think about the money, federal and state? Because ultimately, I hate to say this, but we're going to have to repay it. If we want to borrow and spend and throw it away, there's been, you know, hey, there's been a lot of scandals. Do you remember the scandals involving some, some of those senators who got the first tranche of CARES money? For some reason, we never heard more about that. That is so filthy. And there's more. There was uh, somebody recently indicted for, oh, I forget what it was, $12 million for a scam um, on, you know, taking money that shouldn't have, shouldn't have been taken. So my question to you is, how is the country going to deal um, with having to repay the money, even assuming that the Senate ultimately goes along and gives a second tranche? If it does, it'll be political only. Um, but what are we going to do about tr putting the country back together on fiscal policy? I think that that is so far in the future. Um, and we're going to go so much farther in debt before we get to that point that it's almost folly to just try and sit here and, you know, and try and even talk about it. I want to talk about what Stephanie was talking about, 
that not one single line item for schools in that list that I got from Ige when he was being interviewed and making his little public statement for us, not one penny did he say about schools. And, and that to me is just un, unbelievable. And I'm really afraid that we're gonna start seeing the numbers of kids with adverse reactions and things to this virus coming up soon. The thing is, is the first thing we did when we found out about this virus was put all the kids at home, start, close the schools. It was the very first thing we did, protect the children, right? And then what does Trump wanna do? Let's throw them back to the wolves. And so we don't really know for sure how they're going to respond to this virus. Plenty of kids are getting sick. That, um, is it the Hashimoto syndrome that they're, that they're getting from the virus? Um, lots of kids are getting very, very sick from this. We're just not hearing about all of them also. Yeah. Um, because it's ironic too that you know he one of his big initiatives early on was uh, air conditioners in the uh, in the schoolrooms that was very interesting, but you know uh, we've had a show and and you've read about uh, these air purifiers, uh, which include ultraviolet systems in them, uh, where you can you know reduce the risk, uh, as some people say, uh, and you could put those in classrooms and they would be way cheaper. Oh, that's really important. Oh, it would be a lot of money statewide. But that's the point. It was the kids, it's the space and it's ventilation. The ventilation yeah. in these schools that are making it is, has all been changed and is all high tech to keep the, vi you know. To yeah, have I mean, uh, so it's cheaper than an air conditioner, these things, um, I think. But uh, even if it wasn't, it wouldn't matter. These things would be very useful and that would help to minimize the risk and it would help to make parents feel confident. And so, you know, Winston, it's all in the end a state of mind, isn't it? You know, how confident should we be? Uh, right now, the surge is going up, but but uh, the White House is telling us it's going down. There's a lot of lying and confusion around. There's a lot of people who are either stupid or stupider, uh, who are going to rallies and not wearing masks and so forth. The country is in a crisis on, on every level, political, economic, and public health care. Oh, and the government, I mean, the, the White House wants to knock off the Affordable Care Act on top of that to a Supreme Court that may very well do it. I mean, this, you know, are you, are you going to move to Canada? Where are you going to go? What is your level of confidence now? And uh, what do you see in the future, Winston? Well, this is our country. We have a responsibility to uh, be the best citizens that we can. That means being informed. It means voting the right people in. It means rehabilitating our institutions that have been corrupted and hollowed out. Look, Jay, we've got, uh, we've got 170 vaccines in um, th th that are in the works right now. And, uh, you know, the, as far maybe, as- Maybe maybe when they come out, I should take more than one? Well, maybe you should, but I would wait, I would wait until the, at least until they come out and then you can make that decision. Anthony Fauci said, we need to hunker down for the fall and the winter. He said, just prepare yourselves. You know, there's articles on like, put pictures of the beach if you live in the cold place or put a picture of the mountain skiing if you live in Hawaii so that you can make yourself comfortable. Make sure that you have everything that you need. Uh, we've got uh, also, you know, the uh, James Redfield said, uh, not James Redfield, the CDC director Redfield said um, that what's coming out of the, uh, Scott Atlas, everything was a lie uh, that he said, which is um, disturbing on many levels. And I wonder how much longer he'll last as CDC director. But you know what? It, it, there, are, there are areas of the government that are trying to get us the right news. So we just kind of have to pick and choose and and figure out for ourselves with the best we can with the media sources that we trust of what is actually true, what is uh, looks like the best thing that we can follow. This has been a do-it-yourself virus from the beginning, and we are going to continue to do that. But as we are going along, we're getting more coherent responses, uh, and uh, well, so I'm remaining optimistic. Are. I'm remaining optimistic. My God. Okay, he's still only optimistic. during this show. After the show, you know, then uh, the my yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah, creeps out. Yeah. But basically, tell, tell how we're going to really beat this thing. We're going to beat this thing. It's okay, just okay. we got a lot of pain. We got a lot of pain coming keep up. Keep saying that. Keep saying that. Okay, we have time for last words. Uh, Cynthia, what's your last word you want to give? I think Winston has said he's still an optimist. That's his phrase. What about you? Hashtag paper ballots. No machines anywhere without paper ballot backup. Okay. All right. 
<laughs> Stephanie, what, 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 what do you want to leave on people's minds today? This is where I am and it's not going to help Winston. Okay. Abortion, unionization, support, uh, and, and fossil fuel people who are in the swing states. These are the reasons people are voting for Trump. Okay. Mm -hmm doesn't matter his other ignoramus features. So this has got me down because those people are solid on their grounds uh, to keep those things in place. And uh, and the guns. And hey, doesn't everybody want to go? I haven't seen the end of the gun issue. Yeah. So we don't know that we're clear, free and clear here yet. So maybe the vaccine is our best hope if we can get one that, that is uh, effective because the issues are there for them and that's what they want and the, all the rest of it's ignored. Okay, Tim. Oh my God. He, she made me think of the guns and, and the, uh, the Republican poll watchers and, uh, and the potential riots and God knows what at election day, but I, I don't want to think about that. I'd rather ask you what you think about and what you want to leave with our listeners. Well, I'm sorry to say, I'm going to take you back to that, which you don't want to think about. And that is, if you're, a, if you're a citizen of the United States and you value democracy, then stand up now, preserve the integrity of the election, contact whoever you need to contact and say, we want, we want our, our, our congressmen to stand up. We want, we want to get out there in the streets and say, stand up for the preservation of our, our election system, preserve the integrity of mail-in ballots and stop voter intimidation from um, white supremacist groups or any other group that have long arms and long rifles. That's where the lawyers who want to litigate should be litigating right there. That's emergency litigation. Let's, let's keep those, those ballot checkers, Republican ballot checkers out of the polls. Okay, right. you guys, thank you very much. We're out of time. I can only say one thing and you know what it means. Think tech, think tech forever. Think tech forever. <laughs> Aloha. We'll see you next time. Mahalo.